Hey everybody, this is Frank, your all-knowing gamer, coming at you with another audio commentary. Today we're going to be doing a cast live of these two teams here, which are Team... I don't really want to say this on stream, but this is going to be Team Korean Suck. Over on this side, and on the left side it's going to be Team... I'm going to call them Me Lie. Uh, that's the, what I received in the message, and that's how I'm going to pronounce it. So, Team Me Lie versus Team Korean Suck on the left-hand side here, so being led by Tofu here on Gangplank. So th this is basically what the matchup's going to be. This is for the LOL Report uh, tournament, and uh, it's going underway here. Now, one thing that I do want to point out is that these players are actually... Um, one of the qualifications that you had to have for going into this tournament is that you actually had to be under um, a certain ELO level, not above, you had to be under a certain ELO level, which I believe was like 1500 or 1400 or something like that. So these guys uh, are going to be representing a tournament for lower level players, which I honestly think is a great cause. I think anybody who can, uh, oh it is here, so Korean suck versus Mi Lai or Mi Lee or whatever you want to call it. but. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's a great cause, the, you know, supporting these lower level players, or not lower level, but lower ELO players, and I honestly think it's pretty awesome that they're doing this. So, with that being said, I do want to just take a look at some of the, uh, some of the rules to this contest here. Yeah, I don't think there's actually... <laughs> I don't think there's actually too much to outline here, so I'm just going to go ahead and shamelessly promote this um, off on the forums here. But it does look like uh, we're going to have three minutes to go into this, so I'm just going to take this brief moment to... Alright, so we're good to go now. Okay, so with that being said, uh, thanks for anybody tuning in currently, and thank you guys for watching this VOD afterwards. Again, this is the LOL Report Tournament for players under, uh, I think, 1400 ELO. Now, this team, look right here, the matchup is going to be very interesting. I honestly think that, uh, you know, one major difference that we're going to find here is the top lane is going to be Gangplank versus Garen, and Garen is a character you don't see all that often anymore. Honestly, I think that up against a Gangplank, if this Gangplank can play it properly and basically just make sure that he doesn't get completely spun on top of, and he can just trade blows without Garen's E being active, this Gangplank is going to dominate that lane. Cassiopeia versus Morgana. I think Cassiopeia has a distinct advantage over Morgana with her Q. I think actually a lot of characters have distinct advantages over Morgana. Um, there are a few obviously that don't necessarily that are that are specifically bad against Morgana, such as uh, the Bursters. Like you've got, um, I think Zion's pretty bad if Morgana can spell shield it. But more more than that, I think LeBlanc does very very terrible against her. Um, Brand, I don't think think does so well. There's it's just there's a quite a few of them that don't really fare that well against Morgana, but Cassiopeia definitely with those low mana costs, and that's all you got to be looking at is if you can slowly chisel down a Morgana. That's really the way you want to do it. Yes, you do have to worry about that spell vamp, but it's not really that high anymore. They did nerf it a little while ago, so it's good stuff that uh, she is able to be countered. I think pretty effectively nowadays. Um, also, on top of that, you do have, down at the bottom lane, Sivir and Sona versus um, Alistar and Graves. Now, that's going to be a good combination. I think there are other characters that go better with Alistar, but uh, Graves certainly does pretty damn well against him, uh, or with him, sorry, uh, in that they both are kind of initiation-style champions. They both want to do a ton of bursts and then just back off. And like I said, that's, the, that's a major difference with... Um, Cassiopeia and versus Morgana and all that good stuff is are they an initiation champ or are they a slowly just win the lane kind of champ and I think the slower win the lane champions always have the advantage unless you have some distinct something whether it's your jungler that's going to be ganking for you a lot or something like that which would pair nicely with a LeBlanc or if you have you know like this Graves and uh, Alistar combination though I do think that because Alistar is that initiation type champion, and I've talked about this concept on my show quite a bit, is initiation 
or sorry, engaging champions versus um, oh, what was the other word I used? Engagement versus in something i forget what the word was but basically the idea that you're either looking to engage and win a big fight or are you looking to um just slowly whittle them down or win your lane or whatever you know just do things pretty passively and i definitely think that uh characters that pair with alistar go definitely under the lines of um tristana sivir is really good graves is good as well uh two Two seconds unprofessionalism here. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Okay. Oh. I'm in the I'm in the middle of freaking cast. Okay. Uh okay. 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 Okay, so we're going to be underway with this game. I'm unfortunately going to have to have a brief intermission in the middle of the game because I have a slight emergency that I'm going to have to take care of uh, in a couple of minutes. So, And it's only going to take me about 30 seconds. So unprofessionalism at its finest here, guys. So anyways, uh, going back into this, like I said, and I, I do think it's an important thing to note, you know, th those kinds of things. When you've got, and actually one thing to note here as well is that everybody has flash on both sides and... Um, You've got two ignites for team for team Korean suck, and I again hate saying that, but team Korean suck, and then you've got uh, team Milai on the other side with only one ignite, and you've actually got two summoner heals to replace that though, so that's pretty interesting there. Both both got teams do have a summoner heal on their support as well as a cleanse on their uh, range ads, but. Anyways, like I was saying, that initiation concept is huge. And one another thing, actually, that's going to be really good here for Team Milai is the uh, the AOE. Their initiation is going to be phenomenal. They have a great initiator in Amumu. They have great initiation in... Like, basically, all of this team is based on initiation. And I really do give them the advantage in the late game as far as team fights go. However, you do also have to look at the fact that you've got big AoE from Cassiopeia, Gangplank, Uter, not so much, but he's a good initiator regardless. And I, uh, I would actually argue that him and Gangplank don't fit this team so well. Um, but, yeah, regardless, that's, uh, that is my thought on that. And I do want to take a look here and make sure that everything is in order to make sure that, yeah, there we go. I'm going to have to shrink this one down a little bit here, guys, so that you guys can still see what's going on. Actually, I'll just expand it and just put it over here, up there, down here. There we go. All right, just getting things underway here, guys. So, yeah, um, that being said, huge AoE for this team here on Milai, and uh, these guys are, you know, he's got a, a Doran shield to start, this Garen, which is going to go very, very nicely up against this Gangplank, uh, dodging all of that, uh, that stuff, <laughs> the, uh, the damage that he's going to be outputting. Um, now is the time for the intermissions here, so I'm going to leave the camera here, and unprofessional unpro at its finest, I'll be back in literally 30 seconds. Minions have spawned.
Okay, and we're back into the middle of the action here, guys. I apologize for that, but we're going to continue this cast. It looks like nothing too... <laughs> nothing too special has happened quite yet. You have the Uter coming in here and stealing the Amumu's blue. Or red buff. Bear with me here, guys, for one second. Thank you, Law Report, for having me as one of your tournament casters. And I expect to bring you the top-notch casting that I've been known for my whole life. So, anyways, I'm going to calm down here from that little excursion that I was just on. As actually, one thing very awesome about what that excursion was for is the fact that I got these beautiful, beautiful um, Riot Point cards. Which are going to be given away tonight, so thank you very, very much for tuning in if you guys are down for that. Um, I got these Riot Points that I'm going to be giving away later on tonight, and uh, just taking a look at this game. Thank you guys for tuning in, for those of you who are with me currently, and thanks for watching this later on. Um, definitely apologize for the... Literally, I take it very seriously when I, I'm unprofessional like this, but um, hopefully you guys can bear with me. I've been casting literally all day, so breaks like this are a godsend, or small little things like that. It looks like a Moomoo actually coming in here, uh... Or the game has frozen, so we might actually be lucky here, and this might actually not be the functioning, a functioning game. Or there was just a very large lag spike, so we're gonna see exactly what happens there, as uh, these guys are now gonna continue being underway. Looks like things are going to be uh, speeding back up here. Uh, I don't know exactly what that freeze was about, but either way, it looks like a Mumu actually went top and looked for a gank. I don't know why he didn't actually go in there. I think he had a pretty prime opportunity. Gangplank was actually pushed up in the forward position, uh, or I don't know whether he actually did, and there was just a massive lag spike there. But uh, either way, big lag, and uh, the, these guys are starting to turn it back around, and they're coming back. Things are going, I think, a little bit fast right now. You can see these guys moving very quickly as uh, I think the game is just trying to catch up to the original spot that it's supposed to be at. So just bear with it, guys. It will be a little bit fast-paced for the time being, but uh, these things happen. We are gamers, and we deal with this kind of stuff all the time. So thank you guys for, uh, you know, all the little things that you guys have to put up with. Either way, uh, taking a look at the CS, which I, I think is going to be a huge determining factor in this game as it is, again, lower-level uh, ELO stuff, so... If, you, if there's a major difference in uh, CS, that's going to be absolutely huge. As yes, you do have Sivir at bottom lane with 33. Graves doing a nice job there, though, of keeping up. And you can see here Uter on top of these guys with his Phoenix Stance, flashing forward and trying to get as much damage done as he can. Not actually working out for him too well, so a little bit unfortunate there. So uh, he is going to have to back off from that one. And he still, I think, is running around. Yeah, he's still got red buff. He's had it for a long, long time now. Amumu down with that Philosopher's Stone. And it looks like the um, the Uter here is actually not going to be going for the Philostone first. He's actually going to be going for, I think, the Heart of Gold. I can't imagine anything else that he'd be turning that uh, that Redstone, the Ruby Crystal, into. Potentially a Phage or potentially, you know... I honestly think that he's going to be turning it into a Heart of Gold. I can't even question that. I don't think there's actually any... Um, I don't think that there's any question that these guys are going to be... Uh, or that he's going to be going for anything different here. Sorry, I've got a really annoying cat with me alongside. So, you want to commentate this one too, buddy? Come up here. Come on up here. We're going to show these guys what you're like, what your commentating style is. It's really loud and annoying and shrieking sometimes. But anyways, uh, you can see here already, though, a 500 gold advantage here for blue team, which is team... I just want to make sure what team they are. Team uh, Korean Suck. <laughs> so, while that name still bothers me a little bit, they... Uh, Hopefully these guys are Korean, and oh, a nice catch there with the Dark Binding is actually going to do quite a bit of damage here to the Cassiopeia, who I don't think actually has any spell vamp unless she's specced into it, which I almost hope that she didn't. Gangplank with a nice ultimate down at bottom too. Uh, it's going to do uh, a little bit of damage here to this uh, Alistar, and still running in there and, and gets that stun off, and there we go. First Blood finally going down here, but Morgana and Amumu on the back foot here. Unfortunately, Amumu is still, oh, and missing the bandage toss there a little bit late on that one, but a huge ultimate on four characters this early in the game. Somebody's got to go down here, and it looks like it's going to be Sivir, but not before that ultimate from Cassiopeia goes off onto Graves with the Ignite taking away, and the Spell Shield, unfortunately, is not going to be enough there to save him, so Cassiopeia 
does pick up that kill, and that's going to be, a, 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 I think, a fairly decent exchange there, as you do have the kills going on to the proper people. However, of course, Uder does pick up that kill. Not going to be too game-changing, I don't think, but either way. Everybody say hey to Porkchop. You want to commentate for me, buddy? Speaking to the mic. All right. Unfortunately, my co-caster is a little bit mute today, not really having the best uh, day for commentating, but that's okay. Um, he'll come back on a later day, and hopefully he will um, be a little bit more adju well adjusted to these kinds of things. But either way, just having fun here with this one, guys, as uh, I do have more shows later on today, so hopefully you guys stay tuned for that as well. I have some pro players coming out, and I do have these beautiful, beautiful riot points uh, that I'm going to be giving away here. And I do want to show these to you guys. This is what $50 in Riot Points cards looks like. But I'm going to make sure that nobody gets to zoom those in and steal all those numbers. So that is what I have to say about that. And uh, either way, this is going to be... Uh, it's shaping up to be fairly, it looks like, you know, really early on, it's kind of hard to tell, but when you're 1,400 gold ahead at the 9-minute mark, that's usually a pretty big uh, detriment. And actually, Amumu coming in here, trying to get a, a kill here onto the Uder, does actually do so. Nice combination there, and actually, I really like that from Amumu, getting that ultimate off, and then the Bandage Toss, because Bandage Toss, with so many characters carrying Flash these days, it's so, so difficult to land that Bandage Toss, and, you know, I... Uh, it's arguable that people would say, you know, well, it's a skill shot and you have to be skilled to use it. But it's also arguable to say that it's impossible to land a missile that can be, you know, that you can move out of the way of, especially if somebody has a blink like Flash. So it's a little bit uh, kind of unfair to say something like that. So going for that combination there, I think, is a beautiful maneuver, and I do it quite frequently. Mumu is kind of like one of my mains. Now, one good thing about this bottom lane, though, here is the fact that there is a Sivir and a Sona. Sona with her ultimate and Sivir with her spell shield going to be able to deny a lot of that CC, especially if Alistar somehow gets a Pulverize off first and then goes for the headbutt and it gets spell shielded. That's really going to be uh, uh, really sucky for this Alistar. And here's Sivir just doing her thing, farming so exceptionally well. With this character, um, and I don't know if Sivir's actually going to be going for that new Chaos build, which I thoroughly agree with. Um, the uh, the Graves here certainly not doing so, and still 1,100 gold here ahead for the blue team. Even though kills are evened up, um, they're really doing a nice job at uh, turning this one in their favor here as Amumu going in for yet another kill there. Picks that one up, getting the assist for Morgana is going to really help with that... Uh, just basically continuing to uh, come back in this one as they are still behind another a 700 gold margin even you know despite being up so much and again I, I do want to mention and Graves actually down at the bottom lane goes down as well as almost that Alistar down with 70 health before walking away from that one and uh, one thing that I do want to mention though like I said in the beginning is it's all gonna boil down to CS you've got Sivir that's ahead and I really want to see where the big gap is here 65 CS on the Gangplank, 20 ahead of Garen. You've got Cassiopeia, who is on par exactly with uh, Morgana. 75 versus the 69, so a little bit ahead there for Sivir. Uh, Uder at 45 versus the 51. So actually, really strange. I don't know where that advantage is actually coming from. I would definitely say that Gangplank is beating on this Garen, but it's really not that big of a deal. It's kind of interesting how this is working out like this, but either way... Um, I do actually want to speculate a little bit on this Doran's Blade concept that Garen has gone for here. I really don't agree with that, uh, or sorry, Doran's Shield. I think Cloth Armor 5 Health Potions is a significantly better way to go. And you can actually see here, nice coordination from these guys as Morgana comes to clear out this top lane versus Gangplank. And uh, Amumu's going to hold mid so that nothing really gets pushed down here. And uh, Amumu just trying to see us as best as he possibly can. Gets one out of the four, unfortunately, of those uh, those creeps there. Looks like Dragon could be up for grabs here v relatively soon. You can, you've got this pink ward just chilling here, and another pink ward actually in the bush here for in their own tri bush. So I think that's a good idea. Uh, ward your own tri bush, which allows for the gangs to come down here through this side, and uh, you know countered by another pink ward here by uh, Alistar in, in this bush here. So even if Uder were to come down this side here and then try to get into this bush. 
it's going to be countered uh, by the fact that he'll be spotted by a ward in that bottom lane bush. Looks like blue buff is going to be going down here. Two more Ghana, as there is already a blue buff on Amumu. It's going to go down relatively soon. However, um, not uh, not so soon that he needs to pick up that blue buff, especially not take it away from his Morgana. And Morgana is going to be farming this lane extremely well. She's going to walk back here, unfortunately, and miss a couple of these, I think. Um, oh, she's actually doing pretty good at picking those ones up. Wow, and she actually got the uh, melee minion as well. So that's, you know... Just that auto attack timing working out just perfectly for her to be able to pick that one up. Down a bottom lane here, you do have Graves, Amumu, and Alistar, and that's going to be a ton of CC coming out on these guys. I don't know what the spell shield's going to spell shield, but she's going to get CC'd four times, not to mention the slow from the smoke grenade if it's used. Uh, that's going to be a lot, a lot of CC for the, uh, this... Uh, Sivir and Sona combination to put up with, but if a nice Sona ultimate can go off everything can be fine and dandy And they'll be able to just walk away so long as the Moomoo doesn't ult them both or Alistar doesn't pop them both up, so uh, Fingers crossed that this turns into an epic engagement as a Moomoo just refuses to move here um, I honestly think even a flash in at this point by a Moomoo would be a really good play and then it would have to be followed up here by Alistar looking for a good play as well or even a turret dive at this point uh, you know, there's so many things that could work. Middle lane, actually, Cassiopeia gets lost there, so um, 84 CS for her versus the 79, and this is soon going to skyrocket here for Morgana as she is just, you know, so capable of farming. But with the Catalyst over anything that does extra damage here, and a Bandage Toss needs to come out, like, immediately. Graves needs to start pushing forward into this position. Bandage Toss, ultimate, and then you've got the... Uh, and hopefully he can actually banish toss the Sona, and there we go! Yeah, and there it is, the ultimate gets blocked off there, unfortunately. That was, I think, really poorly played. I think she, he should have led with the bandage toss and uh, picked that up, but he led with the ultimate, which I would say is a good play, but in that position there, he could have led with the bandage toss and picked up uh, the, and gotten the ultimate CC off as well, where Alistar could have came in, pulverized, gotten rid of the spell shield, and then the headbutt. But this might be a little bit over analysis on my part. Regardless, it's going to be... Uh, it's a little bit funky. A little bit funky, in my honest opinion. Okay, I'm just double-checking all these uh, Riot Point cards here and making sure that they're legit and that you guys are excited to win this stuff because I know I'm excited to give you money out of my own pocket. It's one of my favorite things to do. But either way, um, off we go here. You've got Uter in the jungle, of course, stealing the enemy red. This is going to be... Uh, fairly interesting uh, what he, to see what he does with it and you know the actually it's not gonna be really that interesting uh, I, I'm just I, I am however interested to see where he's gonna go Uter it does have a lot of things that he can do he's very versatile so I'm uh, gonna see exactly where he goes with that you've got 106 CS and actually this is where the detriments coming in now you can see a 400 gold uh, sorry uh, yeah 400 gold advantage for blue team here which is team Korean suck and that's all CS. They're down 600 gold. So if they were even on kills right now, they would be down... Uh, oh, I think they picked up Dragon as well. Yes. No, that's not true. Purple Team actually picked up Dragon as well. So Purple Team being up a full Dragon is still down 400 gold um, overall. And they're up two kills. So everything looks to be in the favor of Purple Team. But that's not the case, and you can see here that advantage is really starting to show. 900 gold ahead now, and 1,000. It's just ridiculous how these guys are actually doing so exceptionally well. You've got 120 CS versus the 112, so a little bit ahead there. And I do keep pointing out CS, guys, because this is a lower level tournament. That's what it comes down to at this low level. Is if there's one guy that can just out-farm everybody, that's it. The game can be won by that one character. Obviously, you have to know how to uh, conduct yourself in team fights as well, but that's really what it can come down to. So, um, here's hoping we'll see exactly, you know, who's going to come ahead in this one. Uh, it looks like things have started to just kind of level off. I don't think there's really much going on. Um, yeah, it does look like uh, things are pretty well barren right now. No, no, uh, no like intention on referencing the actual Baron uh, Nasher like everything is just literally just barrened out nothing's going on so uh, yeah taking a look at these builds here and this is gonna be interesting to look at as well you've got Sunfire Cape which I absolutely love 
on a Moomoo. -Moo. However, he's gotten it so quickly in front of his Mercury Treads and in front of his Heart of Gold, which I honestly think he will want to get, especially against a team that has Uder, Sivir, and Gangplank. Uh, Heart of Gold working its way into Randuin's Omen. Pretty damn good item, if you ask me. Uh, really, really good item. And uh, especially against just this much AD here. A little bit of a slip up, I think, there by Morgana. It was going to allow Mumu to come in there, use his E, and pick up a ton of that CS. Um, I think she should have just blocked those creeps and taken a little bit of damage there and just held them in place while she could use her W to pick up all that CS all at once rather than just kind of chilling out there and uh, waiting. And this is actually another nice thing about casting this tournament is there are going to be mistakes made that I can actually comment on because I am I think I'm higher ELO than these guys. But, uh, you know, regardless of that, the, you know, they do have the advantage certainly of having this... Uh, having just being really coordinated and all that good stuff so yeah um but one good thing that's going to come of it sorry i didn't really finish my thought there is the fact that these guys will be making mistakes and it's something that you guys can learn from and uh, as i analyze this um you guys can kind of just pick up you know what you will from whatever it is that i'm commenting on on at the time and uh, i think that's important you know to note things like this and this again is just a beautiful tournament put on by lol report and uh so everybody give a big shout out to them when you get the chance, if you guys are watching this at a later date or, you know, whatever you guys are doing, big shout out to them and to these teams for allowing us to uh, view it because this is uh, very, very fun. And I think I'm actually going to be casting a couple more games later on um, in the week, so look forward to that as well. Looks like uh, Bear Man Uder here is going to come up for a gank onto this... Uh, Onto the Garen, but it looks like Garen is definitely going to get away from that one. Garen, not really the easiest guy to gank, and you can see here that Uder is spotted out by that ward, so just the Gangplank Q is going to go off and get a little bit of damage done there, but not really enough to do much of anything there. Down at bottom lane, though, you do have Graves picking up that Sona and not giving a damn, as all this damage is being unloaded onto the Alistar, and he does turn around here, misses the Q, unfortunately. I think it just came off of cooldown, but misses the Q, and that's going to be... Um, a little bit of damage lost there that it could have done to this uh, Sivir, and Sivir now really low on mana here. He's not going to be able to just burst her way through these creeps, but he's going to do a nice job of using that tower and farming her way into a Bloodthirster, which she will then want to farm extensively as well. Looking at this gold advantage here, again, we're up to 800 gold advantage for blue side here, even though they're staying pretty f settled into being behind in kills, as well as behind in... Uh, a dragon and actually this is really unfortunate morgana i think misplacing her pool quite frequently i think she can farm this morgana significantly better than she is but uh ooh, almost this uh, almost clipping with that dark binding there um that was actually a really really close one but even with so with this will of the ancients taking a little bit of damage there i think is not going to concern uh tofu on cassiopeia here really all that much so she's just going to be able to farm her way back up to full health which is you know Completely Imba, it's like win-win entirely. Using that Q to try to get her away, uh, trying to get some damage down here on this Morgana. Morgana also looking at the Catalyst, which is kind of an old school item to build on her, I think. I don't think it's necessarily the best way to go to start, but it certainly makes her a lot more tanky and a lot harder to deal with, especially with that um, Black Shield. Oh, just brutal, brutal. We're going to see if she whiffs this W. She wants to place it, like, right here so that the end catches. But it looks like catching Tofu there. Nice job. Uh, getting down about a third of his health. But, he, like I said, he is going to be able to farm his way back up here. And is healing off of that Will of the Ancients. And nice uh, nice positioning there on that Miasma. And nice timing on the Black Shield as well. This battle going out here is pretty decent to watch, actually. And we're kind of just using that auto attack as much as possible. Cassiopeia could get caught out here. I don't know if, if uh, Amumu's going to be able to get in here, but in position here, needs to use that. Amumu, get in there. Man, oh man, oh man. This guy needs to get in there and misses with the, the Q. And uh, I hate to say it, but this Amumu is really, really not doing all that great. He's going to go down here and try to stop this dragon, which I think is a bad call. He needs to turn around and help with this Cassiopeia. Man, oh man, oh man, we're definitely seeing some difference here in skill level, I think, with when it comes to the uh, these players here. The, key, the ultimate coming out from Gangplank is not going to stop Garen from getting that kill onto the Cassiopeia, who missed her ultimate. But you can really see the lack of focus here coming out from Mumumu. Unfortunately, missing the, the play on the uh, 
on the dragon, which he did see with this uh, pink ward down here. I don't know how long that's actually been active. Yeah, it's been active long enough that he saw the start of the dragon fight go down. He was in mid lane, started focusing on creeps instead of Cassiopeia or the dragon, which I think he should have focused on dragon first. And bada boom, bada bing, there you go. You've lost yourself a dragon and a secure kill. So definitely some uh, a little bit of lacking in skill here coming out for uh, for this purple team, unfortunately. As again, down three kills. Uh, they're actually on par with dragons now because I think blue team did pick up that dragon, but um, down on kills and really unfortunate that uh, they're down that they're actually behind in gold so much. And again, I said in the beginning of the game, it's going to come down to CS. And my money right now, even though it's four to seven, my money is 100% on the blue team, on this Koreans suck team. Unfortunately, I have to keep continuously saying that. Alright, just sponsoring this tournament a little bit off to the side here. So, um, it does look like blue buff is going to be grabbed here yet again by Morgana here using that Dark Binding right off the bat. Which, I think you're okay to do. Most casters, you can't really do that, but Morgana, I think, does a... Her cooldowns are low enough that she can do stuff like that and just walk away and get that kill. And uh, pick up blue buff fairly quickly here. You don't really want to burst all that quickly if you're a long cooldown caster, which there are a lot of, because you're just going to force your jungler to kite this thing, and it's going to take a really long time and a lot of extra damage that your jungler doesn't want to take here. But still doing a nice job there, and you can see here that uh, I think Amumu actually hasn't gone back to shop for quite some time. Um, just taking a look at these gold counts right now, you've got Amumu at... Yeah, 1600, I think that's the highest in the game right now. Yeah, Mumu's got, he's going to be at 15, or sorry, 1700 by the time he goes back and chops, which he's definitely going to want to do very soon to get those uh, Mercury Treads at the very least. And here comes a Bandage Toss in, and Ultimate should be coming up relatively soon as well. I don't know why he's staying here and fighting this. He should have, um, oh, it looks like because Morgana's coming in. However, Cassiopeia to follow things up here might be looking to flash over the wall. I don't exactly know what her plan is right now. Um, or just staying out of range of the ward, which might be a good idea as well, but with that Dark Binding, I think it's just going to close off the action here. Nobody's going to be able to really do anything, and Gangplank going in there. Looking for that Q, over-dedicating, I think, once Gang once Garen decided to move himself, I think he was good enough to just back up. But uh, taking an extra tower hit when I don't think he necessarily needed to. Looks like Morgana is going to be roaming around here a little bit, trying to figure out exactly what she wants to do. Um, but uh, regardless... Uh, not, nothing really going on for her. She's going to use that pool and unfortunately not kill off any of these creeps. So this tower is going to do work on these uh, few front CS here. And uh, that's really, really sad. And missing the uh, the pool there as well on this candy minion here. So going to be forced to use yet another pool. Thank God for blue buff. That's what I have to say about that. Because uh, I think without it, she'd be in a little bit of trouble here. Looks like Ig is coming out for this Gangplank, which is pretty interesting. Uh, I don't typically see that, but he's got Riggles, Igus, as well as a Phage. Hopefully going to be going for an Atmos Impaler later on, as he does have a lot of items that give him a significant amount of health. Could Ooh, Dark Binding could have just stepped up a little bit there, but is going to use those oranges. Using that ultimate, though, jumping forward here. I think this is over dedication. I don't know if this kill is going to go down. It looks like the Dark Binding is going to be good, but that's a lot of damage that has to be done here. With the Garen ultimate, Dark Binding, he needs to get behind the creeps. Oh, he does get behind the creeps. Really nice getaway here. And uh, like I said, I don't think that was worth it there from the Morgana with that flash ultimate. Really putting a risk here um, on the idea that she's going to for sure get that kill. And really came down to, I think, the Garen ult timing. I think he could have gotten off one more auto attack and then that ult would have done enough damage to get that kill. Looks like Sona, speaking of getting kills at bottom lane, is actually going to pick up the, uh, the kill on Alistar here. So not too shabby there um, and potentially could be pushing down this turret. However, uh... Only one turret down here, sorry, two turrets down for the blue team in favor, or sorry, in favor of the purple team, and still not having a gold advantage at this point. So once turrets start getting cracked here for the purple team, that's going to be really bad news. These guys are just, it's almost like they're biding their time. It's like they're sandbagging, waiting for them to unleash their fury, as you do have, now, uh, Sivir is over, two, she's got 228 CS versus 207, and then 189, 185 versus the... 
Um, 123 and 172 respectively. So everybody on blue team here is ahead in CS. And this is, you know, if nothing else shows you the importance of CS, I hope that this game shows you the importance of CS because this is a really, really, um, like, it's, it's almost one-sided even though they're only ahead like 2,400 gold here. Um, sorry, 2,500 gold. I uh, know 2,400. Not that it matters that much, but 2,400 gold here. These guys are ahead, and it's just CS that's winning them this. They're tied on dragons. They're down on kills. They're down on turrets, but they're winning this game, which is mind-boggling. It's absolutely mind-boggling, and if you guys don't agree with that, then so be it. <laughs> Looks like dragon is up right now, and potentially with Amumu in the fray here, could be going for that relatively soon. Uder in the background here is going to buy a Sheen. He's got a Wit's End to go along with it as well as a Phage. And uh, Heart of Gold's going to be generating re generating the gold for him slowly over time. And uh, it does look like... No, nobody's going to do anything about this. This is just a free dragon. Amumu could have started that a couple of like a minute ago. And he would have been fine to get it. But with this, this uh, pink ward here for the blue team, they're definitely going to be able to spot what's going on here. Uder's gonna come in here, and this is gonna be what I've been waiting for. This is gonna be the team fight that I've been wanting to see here. Unfortunately, Garen, up at the top here, is gonna be farming these golems instead of running down here, but I don't think he, that he actually knows that Gangplank is down here as well. Gangplank ultimate going off, and he's gonna get caught out here by the Morgana, uh, by the Morgana ultimate, and a nice ultimate coming up from Cassiopeia. Unfortunately, Cass is low on mana, and that, I think, is what's gonna spell doom for this team. However, you do have Sivir pounding away on these guys, needs to switch focus onto Graves, there we go. So it's pounding away on that Graves, and unfortunately for the Sivir, who's been doing the most damage on this team, hands down, she really can't keep up with the fact that Cassiopeia is not putting out any damage. Looks like an ultimate coming up from Garen there, is going to pick up the Sona, and uh, Amumu in the background is not going to be able to do anything about this. Gangplank's going to come in here, use that Q, and Sivir doing an excellent job at just healing her way up with that Bloodthirster on... Uh, just healing her way up on these guys and unfortunately not spell shielding in time to dodge that Q, which did a ton of damage there. Whew! Phantom Dancer on the Sivir as well, coming out with the Bloodthirster. Two Dor Doran's Blades, gonna see what she has to buy when she goes back. Has 900 gold, not gonna buy anything too important, I don't think. Could go for like a pickaxe or something like that, but I don't even think she can afford that. Yeah, only 941, she needs 975. So she's just gonna go ahead and go back into the game here with all that gold. Which you never really want to do, but um, your items as range AD are so expensive. You can't really... Um, it's kind of hard to... I don't know. It's kind of hard to, to just buy whatever you want. Like, if you go back with... You know, even you can see here, I think that's the highest number you can go back with without buying anything. But you've got 930 gold that she had on the platform and she couldn't buy anything with it. So that's really unfortunate. Looks like Amumu's gonna step in here and luckily not setting off the dragon with that uh, that Sunfire Cape. Gonna take quite a bit of damage here and actually, yeah, there's dragon doing quite a bit of damage actually. He does 145 damage plus a DOT, which is really, really brutal. So, uh, it looks like Amumu is gonna just be roaming around here. However, he does have quite a bit of health regen. He's got 15 plus uh, 18 health per five seconds. And all these wars just getting taken out here and uh, with the help of Dragon DPSing down this Amumu, the Gangplank Health is going to come out as well. Uder flashing on top of this uh, Graves here, and oh no, oh no. That was a little bit over aggressive there. I think Amumu, yeah, he didn't have his ultimate up, so he couldn't really CC those guys. I think he was trying to save Graves, but it was way, way too late. I think it, his better option would have just been to try to steal that Dragon just randomly. At least not just sack himself on the, uh, on the enemy team like that. But, c'est la vie, off they go, and this could potentially be a good Baron fight, but um, it looks like that's not going to be the case here as Amumu has not gone down. And wow, there it is, so the Baron fight is going to go down. However, you do have Smite having just been used, and Smite is fresh on Amumu, so if Amumu can get down there in time, we're going to see if this is going to pay off for them. But you have Purple Team here with no wards, gonna, just going to have to run a Garen in there, see what he can do. And is Garen going to be able to steal this one? No, he's not. Baron buff does go down here to the blue team, and like I said, this team is starting out, they're just going to start coming back and steamrolling this game because that CS advantage. Nice kill there from the Cassiopeia on top of the bouncing blades there coming out from Sivir. I think, or sorry, Ricochet. I knew it had a different name. Ricochet there coming out from the Sivir, so not too bad there, picking up that kill. 
Looks like these guys are, are going to go back and shop here. I think that's definitely the best way to go about it. You've got Cassiopeia really low on mana, not a lot of mana regen. She's got five mana regen per five seconds added to this character, and that is really not much of anything. She's also got a Rylays, which I don't know whether I agree with it or not. I think she's just trying to make herself the least targetable character on, or one of the... Make herself a character on the team that's also not targetable, as you can see here with the double Doran's Blades. Um, still on Sivir. Once she sells those, she's going to look a lot squishier. And uh, you don't want that. That's a major psychological factor that you have to take into account is like, those bars look scary. Once you sell those and those bars starting to thicken up a little bit, you look really, really squishy. Whereas, you know, if you look at somebody like a Moo or Garen here, who is absolutely ridiculous with 3,500 health already, um, you really don't want to target characters like that. Graves here does not have a lot of, t of attack speed, but I think with his E, will be really, really nice in team fights, and I think he's going to be able to do a lot more damage than even this Sivir is, although, unless Sivir has... No, she does have a Wits at Last Whisperer, sorry, which I think is actually going to put her over the top here. Um, if she had another BF Sword instead of this Wits End, I would say that Graves is definitely going to do a lot more damage here, including the Phantom Dancer here added on to Sivir. And a little bit of damage there actually coming out. Nice poke going off across the Alistar. These three tanky beasts here in Alistar, Amumu, and Garen. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's going to come down to a lot of AoE for these guys. And I think these engagements really need to start clumping up if these guys, are, if uh, Purple Team is going to have any kind of um, expectancy to win this. So we'll see how that goes. And, uh, you know, this is... Uh, it could be very, very interesting. A Mumu ult paired up with the Morgana ult, though Morgana needs to get a Rabadon's Death Cap immediately. 279 um, ability power right now is not good enough for the 34 minute mark. And I actually think that Cassiopeia has is pretty low as well. She's got 340, yeah. Needs that, uh, she really, really, both these guys need that Rabadon. And it looks like actually Garen coming in there. A nice Dark Binding landed on Uter, and all that pool damage is going out across these guys without even the Morgana all going down. However, Gangplank is going to be able to pick up that kill with the Q onto the Amumu here, so he's going to have to back off from that one. And, uh, wow. Pretty, uh, pretty high intensity, actually, on this game. Now that the kills are evened up, you can see what I'm talking about here. I mean... I'm sure you guys could have seen the, the the entire game, but you can really see it coming out into full effect here. 4,700 gold versus the 3,900, and uh, blue team just coming way way ahead here from uh, just from that having that CS, that major major CS advantage. 276 on Sivir, while it's only 30 some odd ahead of the Graves, that's really a major major difference. And it looks like actually Alistar coming in here with the Pulverized Headbutt. Nice move, uh, catching on the Sona, but I don't think that's going to be enough. There is Spell Immune as well with that Dark Shield, but um, really not going to be enough here. Gangplank actually getting in the middle of that as well. getting Eating the oranges and everything was K. So he was locked down underneath that turret. And like I said, she, Cassiopeia definitely needs a Rabadons, but I honestly think that there's a reason why you go for those three Doran's Blades, because that Rylays, you know, I was mentioning the idea that she didn't want to get targeted, but I think with the triple Doran's, she would look just fine against this enemy team here, and nobody would want to attack that. And then, you know, she it gives her the mana regen, which she needs also right now. So this is one of those concept times where you look at the builds, and you just have to know that going for that triple Doran's, and even going for the will of the, the Ancients before Rabadon's, not that bad of an idea either. It can be in that nice lane sustain, but... Um, just really, I think, unfortunate that this is, uh, that she doesn't have, that nobody has Rabadons right now. There needs to be more AP damage coming out right now, because it is, honestly, characters are not going down that fast unless Sivir's on top of them, so, um, that's, that's my say on that, anyways. It looks like Cassiopeia is gonna need this blue buff here, and hopefully, yeah, Sivir doesn't steal that one. Just throwing out one more auto attack, and finally is gonna be able to pick that one up, and hopefully that can regen fairly quickly, because... Uh, she, I think she's going to need it. There might be a team fight relatively soon unless she opts to go back. I just want to check the gold count here to see whether she's in the good here. No, definitely not good enough to go back yet. She needs um, quite a bit more, actually. I think she needs like another uh, 1,000 gold before she can head back. Yeah, exactly 1,000 gold right now before she can head back. She needs 1,940, I think, before she can pick that up. Or a little bit less. Yeah, I think I got my numbers wrong there. But either way, she is going to go back, pick up most likely a blasting wand, and that's about it. Um, but yeah, that's really the characters that I'm going to be looking at here in the, uh, in the coming stages of this game. So we do have Gangplank roaming out here, just kind of stepping down the middle of the lane here. It's a little bit of a lull in the action. No Baron buff anymore, unfortunately for anybody. So, 
You know, it is it is going to reach a lull, but I do have to say, being 10,000 gold ahead is never a bad thing here. So, uh, Gangplank going to be coming in here, trying to duke it out with this dragon, but with the ward there, Purple Team is going to be able to spot them, and... Sorry, Team My... My... No, Me Lai. Team Me Lai on purple side here is going to be able to spot this, but I think this dragon is actually going to go down so fast. They're not going to know what hit them, and down it goes. So that's going to be in the uh, favor here of blue team, and you do have actually Sivir with the Guardian's Angel. Really nice item here, and actually I like this build coming up from Sivir. Maybe smurfing? I don't know, but she's doing a pretty decent job if you have to ask me. Which you do, because I'm the caster, and none of you guys are talking. <laughs> So, um, moving along here, there is going to be this push coming up mid lane. We've got Uder coming in with the bear stance, just running around, trying to find where you can go. And I think Sivir is, definitely has the likeliness to be a little bit more bold here. Does have a fully farmed Bloodthirster on top of the Wits, Last Whisper of Story and Phantom Dancer. She's going to be outputting a ton of damage here. So, uh, good stuff for her. Whiffing on that Dark Binding there, and this is really that moment here. You've got Blue, Bu or, sorry, Blue Elixir running here. On Cassiopeia as well with that 380 ability power in 388 actually with that Rabadon's death cap. So you can imagine once Rabadon's is finished, that's going to be a ton, a ton of damage there coming out for Cassiopeia. Not to mention I think she's quite a bit more bursty than Morgana. These guys really need, looking for that advantage of time to push in, but Baron Buff has or Baron has come back up now, and I, I have to assume that because of the lack of pinging, they're not or they are on Skype. These guys, so they're gonna go ahead and just try to take out this Baron before they get caught out. But um, Purple Team suspects here, so my lie is suspecting that Baron is in contention. I don't know if they're gonna be able to steal this one. They're gonna have to guess. Um, Garen does not have a ward here. Oh, and the ward getting dropped down. Right at the last second there, seeing the last little sputtering of Baron going down there as he seeps into his Uzi Abyss. And uh, forward flash here coming up from Uder. And, you know, there's so many top level junglers that love doing that with Uder, just flashing forward, getting off that stun, especially in gank la ganking lanes. But, you know, he is going to run forward there, even in the middle of this team fight, and uh, try to stop these guys from running forward here. Guys, don't mind my cat. He's part of the casting team here, and he's just chilling out. He's making it really hard to move around the map. So, Baron buff on these guys, and they do have a significant advantage in items as well. 13,000 gold ahead, and these guys taking so... Purple Team taking so long to rack up that gold. But in they go, Amumu with that ultimate, and a huge ultimate actually coming out from Morgana, but she actually isn't going to lock down anybody. Massive ultimate from Graves as well, and that AoE working out nicely for Team Purple. But unfortunately, Baron buff and just way too far ahead here. Um, I said in the beginning that uh, that Mylai was going to have an advantage in the AoE team fights, but man, oh man, did they get their faces wrecked by Team uh, Korean Suck. And really, it just came to, uh, again, I'm, I've said it probably 50 times this game, but it came down to CS. That's what the, the problem was here. We're going to take a look at the score screen really quickly so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. Um, just looking at these gold numbers here, 229 CS on Cassiopeia versus 220, well, 227, it's relatively the same. 255 on Gangplank versus 150, and that, I think, folks, is what did it in. Almost having double, you know, another 45 away from having exactly double this Garen. Um, I think that's definitely what, uh, needed to be done there. Needs to do work. But either way, you've got Uder there as well with 178 uh, CS versus the 141, so he's ahead. 311 versus 280, there's just, there's, that's really the advantage here, guys. Anyways, I'm going to close this one off, guys. I want to thank uh, LOL Report for having me as one of their casters, and I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time if I am going to be commentating any more of this tournament, which I do hope that I am. But uh, I'll see you guys actually in a half an hour because that's when I'm going to be giving away all these riot points here, 9.30 p.m. EST. And I've got an interview with a uh, very well-known and respected player as well where it's going to be kind of an AMA. So stay tuned for that as well. I just need to find this recording screen. All right. Thanks, guys. Peace out.